In this video, we're going to look at one type of question from SQL databases, particularly aggregate functions and aggregate functions that are grouped by another field. Now, the first thing that I want to mention with aggregate functions is that on a typical, very standard, simple aggregate function, there's usually only one column of output data and that is a a way that you can check if your answer is correct um, and also a way for you to spot that this is indeed an aggregate function sometimes if you are grouping your aggregate function there might be a second column but you should not ever have more than two fields or two columns of output data for an aggregate function at most so just to show you the comparison between a normal average SQL and an aggregate, I'm using the 2020, I believe it's the November paper. I can check here quickly. Yes, the November paper um, as an example. So let's run this real quick. So I've coded 2.1.2 engineers. Let's click the button there. You can see, right, we've got a couple of output here. Um, and there's three fields of output in this one, and there could be more, there could be less, but each match to my criteria, to my SQL, um, produces an answer, and that answer has other fields that match it as well. So there could be multiple fields. However, this aggregate function, which I've already coded, but I will redo now with you, um, you can see we only have two fields. Um, so like I said, an aggregate function is at, at is one field, sometimes two columns of output data if it is grouped. Now this is the aggregate function over here, over time amount, and it is grouped by the last name field. So we can see the over time amount, the total, the sum per person. Um, if it wasn't grouped, then it would have given me the over the sum of the over time for everybody in the database but I've now grouped it per person instead. So let's start, let's go through that one again. I'm going to just remove the code. There we go. Let's have a look at the question paper. All right, employees are paid overtime for each hour exceeding eight hours per day. So they work every single day. Eight hours is what they're expected to work. Anything above that will be overtime. An employee's overtime payment is double his regular hourly wage. We need to calculate and display the total amount each employee has been paid for overtime hours worked. And we must do some other stuff, but I want to pause there for now. I want to make the initial aggregate function. Simple aggregate function not grouped by anything, just so that you can see what the output would look like for a typical aggregate function. So let's do what they said here. I'm first going to, and it is important, always look at your database, see what they're talking about. What fields are we going to need here? Here is the hourly wage. All right, so for eight hours a day, they earn that much amount of money per hour. If they work more than eight hours, it will then be double for the extra hours. Um, so let's see, in TBL employees, we have the details of the employee, as well as how many hours he or she worked, but we don't see how many hours they worked. So let's look at the other one, TBL hours logged. Here we can see the employee ID, so that links back to the employee, and we can see how many hours they worked on a particular day. So we need to add up all the days um, that each employee worked. Now, first of all, I'm going to create a normal sum aggregate function, which is going to add up everyone's, everyone's overtime hours. Again, just to see what it looks like. Right. One thing that we have to keep in mind here is how will we figure out the amount of overtime hours? So we can see for this particular day over here, employee 566 worked 11 hours. Um, so what we'll do there is we'll be minusing 8 from that. That means 3 hours of overworked time. So let's have a look. We're going to select 
So we said that we in our select we're going to create our ag aggregate function here. It's going to be a sum, all right. We will be summing the what field was that? The hours worked. Hours worked. Okay. Um, hours worked multiplied by back to T-bar employees the amount per hour hours worked. What is that called? Hourly wage. Hourly wage with a capital H, just in case. All right. Um, so now we're not worried about what we don't want to really want to work out what they are going to earn in total. We're just worried about the overtime. So they will be earning their hourly wage multiplied by two because it's double. And for the hours worked, I'm going to throw that in brackets as well. I'm going to say hours worked minus eight. And that's because I'm not worried about the normal hours. I just want the overtime. So the amount of hours per day minus eight. So if they worked for 11 hours, I'm going to be minusing eight from it. That's three hours of overtime. Three hours of overtime multiplied by the hourly wage times two, because that's the rate that they will be getting for overtime. Right. And we must give that a new name. So um, what do they want us to call it here? Um, over, overtime amount. Okay. Overtime amount. Just go with that. All right. This will be from both tables. So TB employees. Label that as an E. And from TBL, um, what's the other one? Hours, lo hour logs. TBL, hour logs. Label that with an H. All right. Now I'm going to throw in a where uh, clause over here because um, hypothetically, what happens if they didn't work eight hours? What happens if they work for seven hours? If I say seven minus eight, I only get negative one. And uh, negative one multiplied by a number will give us an answer. It's not going to go to zero. Uh, so we want to ensure that we, we only are worried about the records where the hours worked is bigger than eight. If it's eight or less, we're not really worried about it because we only care about overtime. All right. Now this is a bare bones aggregate function, right? There's no grouping here yet because I want to show you what it looks like. So hopefully this works the first time over time. Nope. Okay. Let's, let's see what our problem is. We forgot to rookie mistake. Too worried about the calculation. Forgot to say select. All right. Let's try again. Okay, so there's our answer. It's a little big over here. They're not going to give us any uh, scroll bars. Okay, there we go. So there's the answer. This is an aggregate function, and a normal aggregate function that hasn't been grouped will contain one field and one record. That's it. One field, one record. So the total amount there is 1.79 million. That's the total amount of overtime for everyone in the database. Because it's an aggregate function, I've summed up the overtime for everyone. But that doesn't really help me. I want to see the overtime per person. So instead of figuring it out for everybody, let us group by each person's last name. Assuming that no one has the same last name. So we're going to assume that's unique. Let's do that. What do we add here? The first thing we need to do is we have to also add the name of our grouping field. So uh, we're going to group by last name here. That's what the question asks. So last name. So you can see there's only two fields in the select statement. Although it looks very big, it's only last name and our, 
our calculated field. That's it, just two of them. And we're going to add something here at the end. Group by. We're going to group by last name. There we go. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So now we've got two fields. And remember, as I said, our aggregate function will at most ever have two fields. All right. So here is now the total, the sum of all the overtime earned by this one individual with the surname and the next person, all his total overtime with the person with that surname and so on and so forth until we run out of people. There we go. We can see everybody. There's no duplicates or anything like that. Okay, so this person earned for himself 243,000 rands in overtime, just in overtime. So he's doing very well for himself. Um, now, this is not the end of the question, though, so let me complete it. They do say that it must be formatted as currency. Now, there are two ways to format this, but we can do it the way that I like the most, right over here as part of the calculation. Format, and format has two parameters. In the first parameter, we're going to have our entire calculation. And at the end, we're going to say, in double quotations, currency. We don't specify how many um, decimal places. Currency takes care of that itself. So let's have a look at what that looks like. There we go. Very nice. So they even space it for you so you can easily read 243,020 cents. Very nice. So that looks much better. Let's just see if that's it for the question. Just want to make sure. Display the amount. There we go. So that's correct. All right. So that's that question. If you pay attention to the way that I've done this over here, you can see I've done it one piece at a time. Now, this is a fairly complicated question. It's not a super easy one, not, not by any means. And so you might find yourself getting lost amongst all the different things you've been asked to do. So what you should do is break it down and see what you understand first. Do that. Then, once you've got that done and it's working, read the question again. See what's the next thing that you understand and that you can add to your SQL. And so you build up your SQL in layers until you're happy with the final output. It also makes it easier. You can, fi you can figure out which part of the question is not running and giving you an error. Um, so at least you understand. You, know, you, you don't feel like, oh, I don't understand what's going on at all. At least you know, right, I did part one, I did part two, it was working, but part three, it wasn't working. If you can't figure out part three of the question, no problem. You still maybe get six out of seven, five out of seven. Um, and if that's what you get, that's a that's a 80% for that question. Carry that through for the rest of the paper, you get 80%. You don't have to get full marks for every single question, but you need to get as much as you can. All right. I hope this video helped a bit. Um, I just wanted to show you or help you understand exactly what an aggregate function is. Um, so the last thing I'll say is that 50% of the complexity of this question is not the SQL code. It's figuring out that this was an aggregate function or an aggregate SQL in the beginning. They don't tell you that. They don't need to tell you that. The part of the test is that we can figure that out on our own. And so that's 50% of the difficulty right there.